thank the gentleman, uh, Mr. Lobsack. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Secretary, good to see you today. Thanks for being here. Um, I really appreciate almost everything, not quite everything, but almost everything, or at least much of what, what you and the President are trying to do on the education front, all the way from preschool through uh, secondary education and, uh, even, and graduate school for that matter. Um, I'm happy as an Iowan that when it comes to race to the top, you do have a rural carve out, carve out that you mentioned. I'm looking forward to seeing the details of that um, because as I think I've communicated to your department the, the last couple of years, it's been very, very difficult for states like Iowa, uh, especially those rural school districts um, that don't have grant writers, don't have the resources to participate in a program such as Race to the Top. Also, I'm happy that uh, uh, over the course of the last several years, uh, we've had a lot of discussions and you seem to be implementing some of the changes that I think a lot of us are recommending for NCLB, uh, certainly moving to multiple measures of achievement, achievement. I think that's much, much more important and much better than a high stakes test and being more flexible when it comes to subgroups. I think that's really important too. Um, and growth models. When I first came to Congress for the life of me, I could not figure out why the original law was comparing one group of students one year in a grade level to another. It didn't make, as apples to oranges, didn't make any sense to me. So growth models I think are very important, but really what I wanna talk about today more than anything else is the Pell Grant program and in particular the uh, year round Pell Grant program and, and, and the proposed cuts that uh, you folks are, are making to that program. Because in your FY 2012 budget, you proposed to cut the year round Pell Grant program. I think this program is a significant one for a variety of reasons. I think first and foremost, Pell Grants in general help people in poverty rise into the middle class, become more productive citizens. Uh, education does that anyway, but in particular for those who uh, get Pell Grants. Um, last year already around the country, the first year of operation, 2009, 2010, about 760,000 students nationwide took advantage of access to financial aid over the summer in order to graduate faster and to come out of college with less debt. I think it's making a big difference, especially at community colleges. And as you know, there are many community colleges, uh, such as Kirkwood Community College in, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where they have nursing programs or other programs that, that really are in effect over the summer. So for students to be able to access Pell Grants in the summer, I think it's really, really important. Um, I just think this doesn't make any sense to cut year-round Pell Grants uh, for a variety of reasons. I, I guess what I'd like you to do, if you could, is um, just give us some rationale as to why you're cutting that program. Yeah. So again, I, you're echoing uh, Congressman Tierney's real concerns, and I share those concerns. So I, I'm the biggest champion you're ever gonna find for increasing access to college and increasing Pell Grants as you know, uh, with, through health care reform, we got an additional $40 billion for Pell Grants over the next decade. It's the biggest <coughs> increase since the GID, since the GI Bill. It's frankly one of the things I'm most proud of that we've accomplished in the past two years. And so in an ideal world, um, we, wouldn't have, we wouldn't have made that recommendation. Um, at a time of a extraordinary budget pressure, um, we made the tough decision that, to, to uh, really fight to maintain current levels of Pell Grant funding, not see that 55-50 cut back, as some have <coughs> proposed. And um, we made the tough decision that in order to, to maintain those efforts for, for every single student uh, to, to scale back on the, on the twice a year program. Um, I will say at the community college level, that 5550 um, for the vast majority of community colleges basically means that again, whether you're 18 or 48 or 68, you can basically go to community college for free. And we think that's so important. We, you know, we want to invest an additional $2 billion in community colleges. We think as families get back on their feet, the country should get back on their feet, community college is going to be this huge vehicle to do that. Um, so it's not a decision we wanted to make or made lightly or didn't understand the ramifications. We're just facing tremendous budget pressure and made a very tough decision. Well, I, I went around my district for a week, a couple weeks back, and I went to community colleges uh, throughout my district, all of them. And I can tell you the students, not just the administrators, but the students also are very aware of these proposed cutbacks. Uh, very concerned, of course, about, about FY. 11 and HR1 and what that's going to do in terms of the $850 cut in Pell Grants right now during this academic year. But the summer Pell Grants, the year-round Pell Grant program, I just can't reiterate strongly enough the 
testimonials I've heard from students and administrators and teachers, especially at community colleges, and how important that is. And again, after all, if what we're trying to do is increase the size of the middle class and have more productive citizens and have a more educated citizenry, then I just think that, at least I hope that you'll reconsider that cut. Yeah, no, I absolutely hear and I share your concerns. 